So what I want to do for a few minutes is to press our brains for a bit and, and ask you to step into a philosophy 101 class with me. Okay? Sound good? All right. You know, so if you've never taken philosophy 101 or, um, or you will take it and you're in college or um, you, you did take it at some point but you never really understood anything um, and you intentionally did all your the best to forget all of it, um, I'm going to hit a couple things that every philosophy 101 class covers, uh, that you will cover at least two things, lots of things, but you'll, you'll, you'll cover something called existentialism and something called pragmatism. Okay. Existentialism, fancy word, is essentially a view of life where you make decisions in the moment based upon whatever feels good or seems right to you at the time. See, the goal and, and the purpose is to exist. That's where you get the existentialism. You want to you feel your existence by being immersed and emerged in the moment. Um, those who approach life with an existential philosophy, um, they're kind of like pinballs. So, you know, you're, you're like, you're here, pew, and then you're here, pew, 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 pew. Um, that, and you're a pinball, you know, because you're, you're primarily driven by your emotions, which are constantly changing. They're up and down. So you're here, you're there, you're here, you're over there. You're, you're all over the place because you're constantly changing your mind because your feelings are fluid. They move. Um, what you end up with, with an existential approach to life, is a life with no consistency, with no lasting purpose, with no real meaning, and no real goal except your own feelings. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, you have something called pragmatism. Uh, pragmatism is from the word practical. So it, you, pragmatism is you just do whatever works. You do what, what works. So you have maybe a certain goal. Maybe it's becoming successful and making a lot of money. So you do whatever it takes to get there. You do whatever it takes. Pragma, pragmatists are typically very driven people. They figure things out and they make life work for them. They'll wield it and bend it and make it work. Um, what you end up with then is a life with a lot of consistency and a lot of purpose, but one whose goal is ultimately one's own accomplishments. You'll end up in yourself. What Psalm 23 offers us is a third way, a different approach to life. One where the goal is not one's own feelings or, or accomplishments. Neither existentialism or pragmatism. But the goal is God. So if you want a fancy word for it, you call it theocentricism. I made that up, um, I think. But look at Psalm 23, 6 again. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here's what's great about it. The goal of one's life, if you follow the philosophy of Psalm 23, is God's house. And the sweet thing about that is that in, in this verse, the good feelings that existentialists are after, they're met. Goodness and mercy. You get it. And also the reward that the pragmatists seek. You shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You get the great reward, the great accomplishment in the end as well. Both the desires are met in theocentrism, having God being the center and the goal of your life really the best option. But to have that, you have to be intentional. You've got to have this vision for your life. You have to have a vision for where you will end up, a vision for all, where all of your days will lead you. Probably the best book that I've ever read on having vision is this book called Visioneering uh, by Andy Stanley. I want to read a, a, a part of it from you. He's really good at unpacking. One of the Proverbs says that where if you don't have vision, that people perish. If you don't have vision for your life, they'll perish. And he's really good on that. I want to read you what Andy Stanley says in his book, Visionary. He says, life is a journey. And as you know, every journey has a destination. Uh, you, not heaven and hell. Your destination is this in life, where you will end up in the various roles you play, what you will accomplish personally, professionally, domestically, and spiritually. It's not saying there's no heaven or hell, but you've got to think about where the vision of your life is going. Because everybody ends up somewhere in life. A few people end up somewhere on purpose. Those are the ones with vision. 
They may have other things going for them as well, but they certainly have vision. A clear vision along with the courage to follow through dramatically increases your chances of coming to the end of your life, looking back with a deep abiding satisfaction and thinking, I did it. I succeeded. I finished well. My life counted. Without a clear vision, odds are you will come to the end of your life and wonder, wonder what you could have done, what you should have done. And like so many may wonder if your life really mattered at all. You want your life to matter. You want your life to count. You've got to have vision. You've got to have vision for your life. You've got to have a, a picture in your mind of what kind of legacy you want to leave behind. That when you're gone, what will people remember you for? You have to know what you want to accomplish, what you'd like to be remembered for. One of the things I've done to try and help myself with this is I wrote a personal uh, family mission statement, um, which I think is a great thing for everyone to do, especially if you're dad. So uh, I've had it for years. Mine's my background on my computer, uh, so I see it pretty much every day. Here, here it is. There's my family mission statement. I don't know if you can read that. The, the words might be a little small. First one, my wife and children would see God as the most important treasure of our home. My vision, because we love God, we live under his rule, and worship him in all we say and do. Second goal of my life, that my family would be kind and tender-hearted, loving one another as Jesus has loved us. We believe in the gospel, and we live out of it with the Holy Spirit's help. Third goal of my life, that my wife and children would see that I enjoy them and put them first before others, because we believe our home is the first church that Daddy loves and pastors. Sorry, guys, you're second. Um, then fourth one, that my family would witness me loving Jesus and his word as an example for them to follow. I believe the Bible is God's word and has revealed what we need for life and godliness. That's it. That is the goal of my life for all of my days. If, if I accomplish that, I will die a happy, happy man. That's all I want. That's all I want for myself and, and for my family. That's the goal, the vision I have for my life. Nobody has the goal of, of dying old and miserable. Like, oh, man, I really hope I just die a miserable man or woman. You know? I mean, if you don't want to end up there, you've got to have a plan. You've got to have vision. And without God, it's most likely that any plan that you have will actually end up in misery. That's where you'll be at the end of your life if God is not the center and the goal of your life. 